Welcome to St. Francis Prep in Fresh Meadows, Queens, where this afternoon the Varsity Media Sports Network presents the CHSAA AA Crossover Showdown, featuring the visiting Crusaders of Archbishop Stepanak High School and the host Terriers of St. Francis Prep. This game is brought to you by Massmith Federal Savings Bank. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Dylan Butler here with John Perez. And John, a special feel here this afternoon. There's not many opportunities, maybe because it's a crossover game and certainly because it's two of the elite teams in the AA this season in the last couple of years. But it's, it's one of those games where, like, there's not many in the Catholic League where you really can make a statement. And I think both teams can do that here this afternoon. And the CHSAA scheduling gods also favoring... Archbishop Stepanak as they like to see this challenge of having St. Francis Prep and Christ the King this week but you know there's been a palpable buzz since dismissal here at St. Francis Prep and the crowd arriving in there's always something special about these Tuesday games and for Stepanak an opportunity where we've said the narrative the entire year has been who are the top four teams in the CHSAA it's very top heavy so what's the order of those top four well Stepanak's already knocked off Cardinal Hayes to begin the season uh, they have St. Francis Prep today, Christ the King later. An opportunity to make a statement here for Stepanak as you look at the standings as well. And, hey, you know what? It goes to show how competitive, too. How about St. Peter's and what they were able to do earlier on as well uh, in the season, but so jumbled up at the top and uh, Boogie Flan, as he's pictured there, an opportunity. He doesn't shy away from any challenge, and for Stepanak, they're here to make their claim against the Terriers. The Crusaders' only loss of the regular season in league play came to St. Peter's, and that game was played at Christ the King. As you mentioned, a nationally televised game coming up on Sunday night in Middle Village where the Crusaders will take on the Royals, in which a, a game that many believe is the two best teams, right? But where is St. Francis Prep? Well, in the standings, you see they're behind Christ the King, 4-2. and two. A little bit jumbled up there as well. Obviously, Christ the King leading the way at 7-0. and oh. But the Terriers coming off of a loss, uh, or actually both teams coming off a loss. First, we'll talk about Stepanak. They've played a ridiculous schedule, right? I mean, the number of top 25, top 50 teams has been absolutely incredible. That includes their loss to Simeon from Illinois, a team that's ranked number 20 in the country by ESPN. Uh, that was their last game. That was up in Springfield, Massachusetts at the Basketball Hall of Fame, the Hoop Hall Classic. They lost 52-39 to to Simeon. And as we spoke with their head coach, Pat Massaroni, he said, look, they're a team right now that's certainly banged up. They're down two starters and two big pieces in Ben Little as well as Danny Carbusia. And there you see them right there on the baseline. And you see Little with his left foot in a boot. So those are two starters you're missing. You go from losing to Simeon, a team that had three Division One players, that was a big, strong, physical team, a completely different squad in St. Francis Prep, a guard-heavy team, a team that on 24 hours is not an easy team to prepare for. No, it's in St. Francis Prep on 48 or 72 hours is not easy to prepare for. You could ask any coach around the league. I think what's interesting about Stepanak in that they've been through the battles, but like you said, losing two starters, you're now asking a lot on your underclassmen to perform. It's one thing to actually, and you'll see some freshmen in the lineup as well, get some quality minutes that someone two, three years older than him would get. Now because of that, he's thrown into the fire, and it's already its own uh, bag of... Uh, uh, a bag of difficulties when it comes to uh, just playing at the varsity level and then playing the Stepanak way. But these kids have responded. They've done a fantastic job so far for the Crusaders this year. Pat Masseroni has a ton of trust in them, and there's no reason to believe that they can't step up to the task today for St. Francis Prep, uh, for against St. Francis Prep. Stepanak 7-5 and five overall. The top 50 opponents they played, well, we know about that win at Cardinal Hayes to open the season. The Cardinals at the time were in the top 20. St. Francis, Maryland, when they played them, they were 38. They go down to Fort Myers to the best tournament in the country at the City of Palms. I was fortunate to, to be there for a few years. An incredible basketball tournament. They played two top 10 teams in Centennial and Imhotep. Then Myers Park in North Carolina was top 40. Vashon in uh, Missouri, top 25. Paul the Six, which everyone kind of thinks should be the top team in the country. They're number three. 
and then Simeon, number 20. So he said it's been great. He kind of wishes he had a little bit of an older team, but it's been a fantastic experience for his younger guys. So they're coming off a loss, as is St. Francis Prep. Terriers 8-4. and four. We showed you the standings, 4-2. and two. A rare, rare home loss. It was Friday night here, a 51-47 defeat to Zavarian, where the Clippers lead guards Aaron Goldstein and Nasir Muhammad combined for 44 of those 51 points. It was a, just an off night for the Terriers and uh, their head coach Jimmy Lynch says that Stepanak's not exactly the team that you want to try to bounce back off a loss against but uh, ironically I think the last time that the Terriers be and before Friday lost at home was to Stepanak. Yeah, and that was an R.J. Davis-led team. You know, the one interesting thing in talking to Lynch yesterday, like you said, I don't know if Stepanak is the team that I want to go against. I'm going to say that that's all coaches speak, and he's just telling us that. This is exactly the team that you want. They, you know, you're talking about the competitiveness of his St. Francis prep team. When it comes down to a Stepanak team that, quite frankly, is undermanned, there's going to be a lot of underclassmen that are going to be playing, and it's a packed gymnasium, and you could get into the heads of Stepanak, one of the best home court advantages uh, in, in the borough of Queens. I think this is a perfect time to play Stepanak, make a statement, but also uh, give the seasoning to these underclassmen. And I think if Stepanak is not hitting their shots, and this isn't exactly gospel, with these underclassmen, if they don't get into their own heads, uh, this could be a long day for the Crusaders, and they'll look to avoid that here. Let's take a look at our players to watch for both teams. First for the visitors from White Plains and for Archbishop Stepanak. We were thinking it would have been Boogie Flans and Danny Garpuzia, right? Because that's not a big stretch. Uh, but again, Garpuzia out. He's day-to-day -day with a shoulder injury. So we're going to focus on Braylon Ritvo. He was already in the starting lineup, but um, as you were mentioning, even guys like who are starters, now they're taking even more of an advanced role. Right now, Rit Ritvo is going to be uh, the Carbusi, if you will, to a guy in Fland who is the number 16th ranked player in the class of 2024 by ESPN. Well, let's be honest. Ritvo could be a starting point guard on any other team in the league. It just shows how deep Stepanak is. Having said that, though, this is the time where Masseroni and the coaching staff are going to challenge Boogie Flan, who they say at times is sometimes Mr. Nice Guy, and he's so selfishly unselfish. They want him to be that ball hawk. They want him to be the leader of the Stepanak team today and be a little bit aggressive and get his, and that's going to be the key today for Stepanak is what kind of Boogie Flan are you getting? Are you going to get the pass-first point guard, which is naturally what he is, or is he going to step up to the plate and say, you know what, I'm down two guys. I might have to take this team on my shoulders. Everybody hop on, uh, hop onto the shoulders and I'll lead you to victory. And for St. Francis Prep, the Terriers, uh, it will be their main guys. And it's interesting in that loss to Zavarian, we'll show you their impact players, Josh Pasquarelli, a year ago, one of the best three point shooters in the league. He's still an excellent three point shooter. He's rounded out his game more. He's more diverse. He could score on three different levels, but against Zavarian did not make a three point shot. Jimmy Lynch says, I don't remember the last time that happened. And it wasn't like he was taking bad shots. The shots just weren't falling. You expect that to change, even though the focus defensively will be on him. And when the focus is on him defensively, other guys need to step up. Vera Anthony is an incredible lead guard. I think one of the more underrated guys, although all the, head, all the coaches we speak to rave about Vera Anthony and his ability both in running the offense and also how tenacious he is defensively. And another wrinkle offensively too for these two is that they are smaller guards, but they also post up. And that's something that teams have had to prepare for as well, which is not necessarily an easy thing to do considering that guards don't generally post up at all. And St. Francis Prep will be undersized today. That doesn't, it's not a knock on their ability. Just having said that though, just shows the dynamicness of their offense. See so the Terriers, getting ready for the start of this one. Let's take a look at the keys to victory in this game. And uh, I think, John, you alluded to a, a couple of these already in our lead up to the opening uh, tip. But for Archbishop Stepanak, they need to share the ball offensively. They need to guard in half court. Pat Masseroni said that Jimmy Lynch's offense, which is kind of like a modern day Princeton style of an offense, is super difficult to prepare for. So guarding them in all the different uh, screens and back cuts 
is very, very important. And as we mentioned, limit Pascarelli as much as possible as well. For St. Francis Prep, you got to stay in front of the Crusaders off the bounce. They're going to be better on their closeouts as well. And the shot selection will be huge as well. Let's take a quick break. We'll have the opening tip when we return right here. It's the CHAA AA Showdown on the Varsity Media Sports Network. You're watching the Varsity Media Sports Network, the home for New York high school sports. St. Francis Prep prepares young men and women for the world of tomorrow by immersing them in the Franciscan tradition's four golden links, intellectual, social, spiritual, and physical. Facilities that are second to none. Teachers who instruct and inspire. Values of peace, love, and respect for the individual, community, and environment. High school is four years. St. Francis Prep is forever. Maspeth Federal Savings is here through it all. The ins and outs, the ups and downs, through the winters, the summers, and even the spring of leaks, know that Maspeth has your back. From luxury sheets to balance sheets to dancing under the stars, your mission is our mission. And when our community calls, we proudly step forward. So whether you need it now or planning for tomorrow, through all the twists and all the turns, you can always find us right here in your neighborhood. Varsity Media covers every sport at every level from every angle. Game film, recruiting videos, highlight videos, sports casts. Under and what a look. Photography, live streaming. You name it, we offer it. Don't leave your video needs to amateurs. Trust the pros. Contact us at 516-403-2050 or visit us online at varsitymedia.net. We welcome you back to Fresh Meadows, Queens. Dylan Butler, John with you at St. Francis Prep. The starting lineups about to be introduced to both teams. Let's take a look at the starters for Archbishop Stepanak. First, the visitors in the championship game a year ago, losing there to Cardinal Hayes. You see the starters on your screen, Boogie Flan, Brandon Ritfo. Now the two changes are the next two guys. They're stepping in for the injured players. Both are freshmen. Hassan Caressi, Dylan Perry, as well as Jordan Gabriel, the head coach of Archbishop Stepanak. In his eighth season is Pat Massaroni, a 2006 graduate of Stepanak. Let's take a look at the starters now for St. Francis Prep. The Terriers, an unchanged starting five, but you kind of wonder how long that's going to be considering how well the freshmen for them are playing. But you see it's here, Anthony. Nigel Moore, a guy who Jimmy Lynch, their head coach, says could be the X factor for his team. A guy, maybe that fourth guy, if he can get going, scoring will be really important. Pascarelli, we mentioned. Tyler Michelle, as well as Al Chen inside. The head coach of St. Francis Prep in his is Jimmy Lynch, a 1999 graduate of St. Francis Prep, a former assistant coach, associate head coach for the late great Tim Leary, was last year's CHAA coach of the year. Our officials for today's game, Oren Barfield, Mel Chetham, and Steve Rossiter. John Perez about set to go here, and it's interesting, right? Shot selection for St. Francis Prep will be so important because Stepanak is so good in transition. They get out, they want to run. Obviously, St. Francis Prep, they prefer to slow it down, play their half-court set, which, again, is a unique one, as Massaroni says. He says the only maybe comparison is a little bit of a St. Peter's team, which, again, is their only league loss of the year, and of course, that was a day where St. Peter's knocks down like 10 three-pointers and you know they everything falls for them and uh, it was a struggle for, for Stepanak and Masseroni said we thought that was like an upset on the day but meanwhile St. Peter's is having a really solid season. 
Yeah, 100%, and good win for St. Peter's. Listen, when it's your day, it's your day. Um, when it comes to St. Francis prep on offense, one thing I'd love to see out of Lynch right away. As Fland attempts the three, no good. Pascarelli with the rebound. New hairdo for Josh Pascarelli. Up top is Hao Chen. Yeah, looks good. Want, thought that you'd see uh, Lynch draw up a play for Pascarelli to shoot it from deep, get his confidence early on. I thought I would see that hairdo from you coming out of your honeymoon in Cancun. <laughs> Pascarelli for three. Front rim no good. Rebound goes to Dylan Perry. Perry will now set the screen for Flan. Good job by Pascarelli to flash out. An open three-point attempt. Rims around no good. That was Caressi. The rebound, though, goes to Ritfo, who puts it in. Ritfo, just the transfer from Trevor Day School. Uh, a good guy that's really taken a huge leap this year, and... Uh, opens up the scoring for the Crusaders. Yeah, more comfortable in his skin this year at Stepanak after transferring last year as Pasquarelli now top of the key, guarded by Flan. Flan to take away, going to the basket. Ooh, the pass as well, looking for the open player, and that was Dylan Perry. He was stripped, but the ball will stay with Stepanak, and maybe that's one of those situations where Masarani was saying, right, maybe be a little more selfish and take it to the hoop yourself. Well, it was a good pass, though. Perry just uh, couldn't corral it, but you're right. Yeah, want to see a little bit more assertiveness from Flan, but did not make the wrong pass, per se, and you can see why Hofstra really likes Dylan Perry. Oh, yeah, already offered. There's Ritvo at the elbow. Here is Perry for three, or that deep two, that is, and that is good. An early 4 nothing start for the Crusaders. Tyler Michelle. Guarded by Gabriel. Fear Anthony, back out to Michelle. Gabriel, a transfer from Mineola. It's a long trip from Mineola up to White Plains. There's Pasquarelli to Anthony. You see the cutters, more cutting through, now Michelle cutting through. Three point attempt by Nigel Moore, rims out, Pasquarelli the rebound. Nice pass for an open, Michelle for three. <laughs> Stepanak not boxing out. St. Francis Prep makes some pay, and it's exactly what the Terriers needed early on as they have to go blow for blow with Stepanak. 4-3, early lead for Stepanak. Here's Ritvo guarded by Michelle. Terriers also a man-to-man -man look. Flans. Anthony, you do have your best defender on the best attacking player. There's Perry in the post, throws it back out. Land somehow saves it. Thought it might have been a backcourt violation. Regardless, the ball will go to St. Francis Prep. Yeah, and it was. Wasn't touched. So because of that, Fland was trying to avoid the turnover. Of course, it doesn't matter anyway because St. Francis Prep has possession. Veer Anthony, a couple of Division I offers are ready for him as well. Manhattan and Robert Morris. We expect those to continue. Here's the Maris bound. Pascarelli for three. Well, there's your open look early on. Puts the Terriers in front, and that'll get the confidence going. Not to say that Pascarelli lost any confidence by not hitting a three. Still finished with 14 points, but having said that, though, that's part of his game, and you want to see him connect from distance. Yeah, that's got to be a good, if you're Jimmy Lynch, too, on, the, on that bench, that's a good feeling because you knew, you know your guy knocked down his first three attempt. Here's Flans to the Ooh. hole for two. And a lot of contact there, and it just goes to show the muscle that Fland has put on from last year, too, and finishing strong at the hole. Chen can't corral that ball. It's taken away. Here comes Ritvo. Good job just getting hands in the passing lane by Chen. The ball stays with Stepanak, but he avoids a potential layup there off the turnover. And I think for any young basketball players out there, that's exactly how you, uh, you redeem yourself. You know, you have a pass where you take your eye off the ball, but make up for it on the defensive end. Gabriel loses it. Here's Pascarelli in transition. Finds more, pulls up. Side rim no good. Rebound goes to Flans. Eyes up, looking for opportunities. Pulls up, foul line jumper. Back iron. Got a good shot, just a little long, but good job boxing out for the Terriers. Michelle up top to Moore. Averaged 20 points for the freshman a year ago. Here's Michelle, pumps the brakes, rejected inside by Perry. 
Caressi. Harassed, kicks it back out. Nearly a traveling violation. And it goes to Flans. And Chen will be called for the blocking foul. He tried to flash out as we saw a moment ago. This time though, he's called for the foul. And Chen will go They'll stay on bench, right? Oh, yeah. there you go, late game. And here comes the freshman, Manasako. First opportunity seeing a, seven, a size 17 size shoe. A lot of young bucks on the court right now. This is not the freshman game. Perry off the glass for two. I think what's interesting with Perry, and Masseroni says that, you know, they see him more as a guard or a wing, but because he was always the tallest player in his class or on his team, he's used to playing center, so he's got those fundamentals as well. Oh, great backdoor cut for Pascarelli. Pascarelli moves so well without the basketball and gives his team buckets. We are all tied at eight here. Stepanak, St. Francis Prep. Brought to you by Maspeth Federal Savings Bank. Caressi, a little push off, and it was called. Another substitute and another freshman enters the game as Troy Faison steps in. How many freshmen? Let's count them up right now in this court. You got Faison, Sacco, Perry, and Caressi, right? Four yep. freshmen on the court combined. Pierre Anthony, who, he, he's the uh, elder statesman as a sophomore. Here comes Flan, the head of the field is Ritfo for the jam. The old man jam, the junior Ritfo with the two-handed slam. Balanced scoring for Stepanek right now. Four different players in the scorebook, and the visitors have a 10-8 lead. Pierre Anthony drives, gets a contact, and he gets the basket. Tough to hang with him, Josiah Jervis, the freshman, trying to stick with him, but you just see the added muscle by the elder statesman. Yeah, Vera Anthony, legs like tree trunks. Perry, top of the key, they'll swing it. Jer oh yeah, Jervis, sorry, it didn't mean to leave him out, so it's five freshmen on the court, number 25, as Caressi gets to the basket. Caressi, of course, from an athletic family as well. Uh, his brother Solomane playing on Iona Prep. It was a good Iona Prep team a few years ago. Bryce Wills, who played at Stanford, as the three gets cashed in by Pascarelli, and that's his second triple of the quarter. It was right with Boogie Flan's hand right in his face. Now Flan looks to get to the basket, loses it. Great defense by Veer Anthony. Another sub for Stepanak, Amir Sullivan checks in. And he's one of those guys where really like, this is in our conversation with Masseroni. The guys who were maybe six, seven, eight on your bench now have elevated playing time because of the injuries. Yeah, and that's something that they've been fighting for all year. Um, Masseroni says that he's always had competitive groups, uh, guys that are always asking how can they play, how can they play as uh, Stanchi gets fixed. And that's what happens when you got a few rim rockers on both sides. But yeah. This is an early call, and for Masseroni, he's probably telling, all right, you guys wanted playing time. You've got it. Now show me something. Yeah, that's the glass half full, right, for Stepanak. You, you have this crazy schedule, and we'll detail it as this game goes on. The schedule wow. this week is also brutal as they get back to league play now, but it's a fantastic opportunity for these young guys, right? Michelle now for three, and that's good. Good to see the confidence early for the Terriers. And Sullivan didn't do anything wrong. In fact, he stood with both ball handlers and had a hand in the face, but just couldn't stop Michelle. Second triple of this first quarter for Tyler Michelle. Inside the final 30 seconds. Oh, nearly steps there as well for Ritfo. Up top to Jervis, swings it. Here's Sullivan looking to drive baseline. He loses it though, and turnover. What this will do as well, John, is give St. Francis Prep the opportunity here to take the final shot of this first quarter as Gabriel checks back in for Sullivan. Yeah, looking to get a good shot, and that's what Jimmy Lynch just said. Calm it down and hold for the last shot. Get a good open look. If you could get a three or the open two, but 
That's going to drive you crazy if you're Lynch. Turn it over, especially when you're just playing for one. So anyway, the point that I was going to make for St. Francis Prep, I'll just make it for Stepanak. Get a good shot off, uh, go into the second quarter, only down one possession. <laughs> so Ritfo will look to inbound right at midcourt. Gabriel, who came on for defense, now checks back out as Caressi is back in the game. So now the Crusaders can potentially hold for the final shot as it's Flans guarded there by Michelle. It'll be Flans. Swings it. Three-point attempt. Jervis rims around. No good. Rebound pops out. Caressi beats the buzzer. Three-pointer for Caressi. Five points in the first quarter for him. And he does exactly what you said that Maserini hoped they would do as they pulled this game to within one point. A really good opening quarter here in Queens. You're a score. St. Francis Prep 16 and Archbishop Stepanak 15. You're watching the CHSAA AA Showdown presented by Maspeth Federal Savings on the Varsity Media Sports Network. You're watching the Varsity Media Sports Network, the home for New York high school sports. Maspeth Federal Savings is here through it all. The ins and outs, the ups and downs, through the winters, the summers, and even the spring of leaks. Know that Maspeth has your back. From luxury sheets to balance sheets to dancing under the stars, your mission is our mission. And when our community calls, we proudly step forward. So whether you need it now or planning for tomorrow, through all the twists and all the turns, you can always find us right here in your neighborhood. Welcome back to St. Francis Prep. Dylan Butler, John Perez here with you on the Varsity Media Sports Network. A Tuesday afternoon showdown between Archbishop Stepanak and St. Francis Prep. After one quarter, a very good opening quarter, it is St. Francis Prep with a one-point lead. Yeah, got some big-time shots from distance coming from Vera Anthony, Pascarelli. Michelle hit a shot as well, but St. Francis Prep, sloppy basketball, the final possession that allowed them to give up a three. Pascarelli off the screen, three-point shot, back rim, no good. Here comes Stepanak, Jervis, hands off to Ritvo, tries to drive baseline, rejected by Zacco. Moore, Anthony, in the lane, off the hands, though, of Faison, and out of bounds. Really love the size of Sacco, and you know, he's a player that can win you some ball games down the stretch, especially with his defensive interior presence, and you saw his first block of the quarter uh, in the last trip down. And he's that difference in this St. Francis Prep team, right? There is not another 6'7 guy. Obviously, you see a team like Price the King, they've got about 37 of them on their team. Sacco is that guy. Flan off balance, forcing one there. And it goes out of bounds. But you know what, Dylan, and you've seen this too um, in your time covering the league, you can win with guards. Uh, and look at Zavarian in 2015-16 going with five guards. Uh, Neontae Wiese, Zach Bruno on that team. I'm sure St. Francis Prep is tired of hearing about Zavarian, but either way, uh, it can be done. And this is a team that has the horses to do so and a good combination of guards in the backcourt. That said, it, it does help to have... Number 32 there on your side as well. Pascarelli to the hole. Doesn't get it. There was a little bit of contact, but I like this veteran officiating crew. They're letting them play. Yeah, I mean, listen, when you got Oren Barfield on the call and uh, the rest of the officials as well, uh, Steve Rossiter and uh, Mel Cheetah, then, yeah, they let it go. I mean, some of the better officials, too, uh, in the league getting these A games. Anthony off the inbound. Chen in for Sacco. Good call underneath. You see Vera Anthony looking to try to post up and the foul called underneath. Yeah, Howard Isley's gonna get tacked for the foul. And, you know, fresh 35 for St. Francis Prep. And that's what one of the things too that you were saying as Chen steps out straight deep too. But that's one of the things that you were saying that also makes the St. Francis Prep team in their offensive sets unique and difficult to defend because Anthony and Pascarelli will post you up down low. Here's a steal, 
save, but it saved to Jervis. Jervis. Isley for three. It's good. Isley needed that in the worst way, missing 12 of his first 13 shots from distance to begin the year. Obviously, his father, an NBA vet, uh, assistant coach at Michigan, but uh, Isley, a guy that they're expecting a lot of big things out of. Sullivan can't get that to fall. A little bit frenetic right now here for both teams. Pascarelli spins, looks for options, kicks it out to Chen. He'll fire up a three, and that's good. And really, how Chen is probably about a foot away from having back-to-back -back threes after hitting that deep two, his previous possession. An interesting area of concern that Jimmy Lynch brought up yesterday was that a ton, he said, this is his quote, at times we could just watch the ball movement as Stepanak hits a three, that's Josiah Jervis. He said, at times we're just watching Pascarelli and Anthony go to work, and we're not having other guys be, um, be assertive. But when you've got guys like Moore and Chen and in their spurts, this is where St. Francis Prep has to take advantage. Chen stolen away by Caressi. Kickball called against Chen. Ritvo will come back in for Jervis. Sacco also back in for Chen. You know, I like the shooting out of Chen, obviously, on the offensive end, but defensively, too. He had that bat down on the pass attempt earlier. That was a good kickball, too, because you've had uh, Stepanak right underneath the basket. That would have been an easy bucket for Jervis. So uh, Chen will get a breather now, but uh, doing a good job defensively. Good look there at the head coach, Jimmy Lynch. Jimmy looks like one of the students. Yeah, he's. I, I love too. He's staying old school as well with the with the sweater, uh, as the late great Tim Leary did as well. What a guy to just soak up knowledge from, right? As well as a traveling violation is called against Ritfo. Isn't that the rule though? If you coach at a Catholic school or institution, that you have to wear a sweater in Queens. Excuse well, me, that you have to wear a sweater as well. A sweater or a sweater vest. Right. You can go sweater vest as well. But, yeah, there needs to be some – I don't know if it's because, it, I mean, the gym isn't particularly cold. But, no. yeah, I think, it's, I think it's the look that you have to have. It's part of the school uniform, if you will. Pascarelli from the elbow, no good. Sacco rips it down, but he's unable to hold on to the ball. Caressi. And he will be called for the carry. So both teams turning the ball over here in the second quarter. Well, you see without Boogie Fland on the floor, a lack of semblance of offense for Stepanak, and they're going to have to deal with these stretches as long as they continue to be under man. But, of course, I don't think anybody ever thought that Boogie Fland was going to play 32 minutes a night either. Sacco steps out. Foul line jumper no good. Pascarelli gets the rebound. Quickly passes it to Anthony. He's doubled in the corner. Kicks it up top to Michelle. Michelle now tries to drive basket. Good look down low. And Sacco unable to get the finish, but he'll go to the foul line. Good aggressiveness down low. He's really got good feet, good hands as well. Uh, just someone who, as he continues to grow, put it together. Uh, he's just going to be one of the toughest players to watch, uh, toughest players to guard in the CHSAA. Made this point in previous broadcasts, but you know Jimmy Lynch talks as you see Sacco here inside just missing the potential three-point play, but he's got that high and potential, and potential is sometimes a, a difficult word, a scary word, as he misses both free throws. But it's a little bit unlike a player who's ever come through here. Right? You, you've not had guys who have gone to Kansas and Kentucky like maybe other CHCA programs have. High off the glass is Nigel Moore for two. You know, Moore, a guy who had the propensity for scoring, averaged around 20 points a game as a freshman uh, on the freshman team. And because of that offensive output, has earned a spot on the varsity squad. Ritvo steps out, in and out, goes his three attempt. Anthony down the court to Sacco, and he'll lose it on the baseline, stepping that ball. Harry and Flan back in for the Crusaders. That's what I was going to say. For Stepanak, you, you kind of want to get your main horse back into the game. Took off uh, the first half of this quarter, and... With the Terriers not exactly gelling on offense, this is an opportunity to not only take the lead, but make a statement. Steal down low by Moore. 
surveys the situation, swings it to Michelle. Back out, and there's Pascarelli. He'll be that combo guard for John Dunn up at Marist. That three no good. Look at Sacco getting up high, and the lefty finish inside. Not an easy thing to do off balance, but Sacco with the deuce. Four point lead for St. Francis Prep. The Terriers have had the lead, but it's not been a big one throughout. Isley hands off. Peresi to Perry. That's freshman on freshman. Perry and Sacco. Isley, six on the shot clock. Michelle flashes out on Fland. An extra step, no basket, the foul on the floor. Gotta love the aggressiveness, but you can also see that Fland uh, a little frustrated as uh, team a little stagnant, moving without, uh, the, not moving without the basketball, and that'll frustrate a point guard who's trying to create a play, but also create contact too, and I'm sure in Boogie Fland's mind, he's saying, hey, well, they're not gonna call the hip check foul. I need you guys to get open. Ritfo inbounds underneath. The foul line to Perry. Here comes Caressi off the Perry screen. That shot no good. Jump ball. Jump ball. The possession stays with Stepanak. And that's a little bit of the issue, I think, for St. Francis Prep. And we've heard it wasn't one of the keys this game, but for so many games that we've done, Jimmy Lynch says one of our keys is rebounding, team rebounding, because we don't have the size as the other team. You see Sacco there, able to battle at 6-7, but not getting the other help as obviously a bigger Stepanak team winning that possession. Flange. Bang! He just makes it look so effortless, too. Even including the shot that didn't count before. Ping-ponged along uh, a, a few defenders and still got the bucket to go. I mean, he's really grown a lot over the last 12 months. Down low is Moore. Up top, Sacco for three. That's good. And a timeout is called by St. Francis Prep. Full timeout for the Terriers, and Sacco showing his range, knocking down this triple. I mean, hey, if you're Stepanak, unfortunately you have to let Sacco shoot that three. I'm sure they'd give him that shot again. And for Sacco, hey, he knows he can make that shot, and he drains it. You see the huddle there for St. Francis Prep. The Terriers' upcoming schedule. We'll show you that now, and you can see the Battle of the Boulevard. About, I've done this, uh, I've done the trip a million times. I think it's about 2.3 miles of uh, Francis Lewis Boulevard. You cross over Northern Boulevard, you get over to Holy Cross. Good luck finding parking there. But that's a big one Friday night as St. Francis Prep takes on Holy Cross. Then St. Peter's comes here. That'll be a fun matchup yep. as well. You go to Bishop Lachlan, another place. Good luck finding yeah, parking Yeah, no parking there. there. Or Malloy. Yeah, well, you're home for Malloy, so uh, maybe a little bit of a better chance if you know somebody around here uh, to get a parking spot. But that's the upcoming schedule. And that's kind of the same for both teams now. You know, you play your out of conference and you're out of state. You go to City of Palms. You go to the RB Classic if you're... St. Francis Prep, and, and, and now it's the nitty-gritty pretty much of your schedule. Um, it's all league play now. It's Tuesday, it's Friday, it's Sunday, and rinse and repeat going forward. And it adds to uh, the familiarity, as the uh, clock never went off, uh, just being familiar with these other teams. You know, Stepanak and St. Francis Prep have aspirations on winning a city championship and a state title. They're going to have to face each other again. So they're going to take what they're going to, you know, they're going to take the lessons out of this game. Of course, they'll be watching the replay of the game as uh, all broadcasts are archived after the final buzzer. Um, so they could watch that on youtubecom varsity media. So they're going to be doing that, um, as well as getting to know the rest of the league because you've got the diocesan and you've got the intersections. I feel like this is, uh, as we mentioned at the beginning of this broadcast, one of the special things about this game is. The crossover games, your, your, your divisional games in Brooklyn, Queens, or, or the New York Archdiocese, and you play teams twice, home and away. These games only you face a team once as Isley. He'll knock it down again. So you're only playing these teams once in a season, so it, it, it lends maybe some added emphasis on a game like this. Isley, two triples in this quarter. You only have one on the season. 
One point lead for St. Francis Prep. Nigel Moore will dial it up from deep. And he could shoot it from deep. Was injured in the beginning of the year. Had some nagging injuries, but seems full of form now. X Factor, Dylan Perry says, I'm gonna join the three-point party. That's the first time that I didn't see Chen go up on a defender and Perry makes him pay. Pasquarelli's like, listen, I'm the guy who leads this charge. I need another three here. Faison. A cutting Pasquarelli back out to Faison. Chen, he's got a triple already on the day. Make it two. It is raining threes here in Fresh Meadows. Final minute of this first half. Four point lead for St. Francis Prep. Perry guarded closely by Chen. There is Flans. He's got Michelle on him. Tries to shake him, pulls it up. Back rim, no good. Perry, the volleyball putback attempt, no good. And then he's called for the foul. That's a frustration foul there against Stepanak. But one interesting thing that I think we didn't really notice, or at least I'm starting to notice now, for St. Francis Prep, they haven't doubled Boogie Fland at all. And because of that, uh, there haven't been any open looks for Stepanak over the last four minutes. And uh, good job by Jimmy Lynch and the scout. I always, my interesting thing that I've noticed too is that it's been Michelle guarding Fland when Vier Anthony is arguably their best defender. So now shot clock off. Terriers can hold for the last with the four-point lead. Anthony Chen sets up the screen. They flash out to him. Here's Michelle. Five seconds left. Anthony through traffic. Loses it, still has it. Turns baseline. And that shot is no good. A four-point lead for St. Francis Prep at the break. A really good opening first half of basketball. We'll be joined here at halftime by St. Francis Prep head coach Jimmy Lynch. Uh, you did remember. I appreciate that. I, I, I had to wave you down there for a moment. But, uh, Jim, thanks for joining us here at halftime. Um, I thought a high level. I mean, obviously both teams turned the ball over a little bit. It was frenetic at times. But, I thought a very high level first half for really for both teams. Yeah, I don't, I don't think you can make a mistake in this game because I think both teams are just countering the mistakes. Uh, you know, you screw a little bit thing up here or there, somebody's going to hit a three, somebody's going to race down the floor and make an easy one. You know, you mentioned yesterday too about how at times your offense could be a little bit stagnant looking for other offensive weapons. Well, how Chen and Nigel Moore, what have you thought of their performances? They're playing great because they're doing, they're doing minimal. You know what I'm saying? Like when we're, we're really good, when we don't dribble, we don't over dribble. We just make the right pass and we cut and we take the open shot. When these guys take the open shot, they can make open shots. So if we don't try to do too much, we're really good. Boogie playing with five points in that in that first half. He's obviously one of the best players, if not the best player in the league. What's been the key there? I know that it was Vera Anthony early on and then Tyler Michelle and uh, making it difficult for him, it seems like. Yeah, just, you know, he's so talented. He's so good. Um, he's going to have a spurt here at some point where he scores six or eight in a row. Um, it is what it is. Limit his touches, make him take a, a really difficult shot, and then try to be a little physical with him. If he, if he puts it on the floor, try to square him up, foul him with your chest, and, and take your best shot at him. And just lastly, what do you want to see from your team here in the second half? I hope we can shoot it the same way that we shot it <laughs> uh, in the first half. And, and I think we're going after the ball. we got a good effort from some guys on our bench. So. We're playing really well. We just got to move the ball, play within ourselves, and we should be okay. Jimmy Lynch, head coach, St. Francis Prep. Thanks for joining nice, us. Nice, guys. Thank you. It is halftime here in Queens. It's a four-point lead for St. Francis Prep over Archbishop Stepanak. You're watching the CHA AA showdown presented by Maspeth Federal Savings Bank on the Varsity Media Sports Network. You're watching the Varsity Media Sports Network, the home for New York High School Sports. Maspeth Federal Savings is here through it all. The ins and outs, the ups and downs, through the winters, the summers, and even the spring of leaks. Know that Maspeth has your back. From luxury sheets to balance sheets to dancing under the stars, your mission is our mission. And when our community calls, we proudly step forward. So whether you need it now or planning for tomorrow, through all the twists and all the turns, you can always find us right here in your neighborhood.
St. Francis Prep prepares young men and women for the world of tomorrow by immersing them in the Franciscan tradition's four golden links, intellectual, social, spiritual, and physical. Facilities that are second to none. Teachers who instruct and inspire. Values of peace, love, and respect for the individual, community, and environment. High school is four years. St. Francis Prep is forever. Hi, I'm Gene Steratore, CBS Rules Analyst and longtime sports official. For the adults watching this video, you grew up in a world where officials, umpires, and referees for youth sports took their place regularly and reliably ahead of game time. Today, unfortunately, it's getting harder and harder to fill those jobs. Videos showing abusive treatment of officials multiply on social media and there have been consequences for the dreadful behavior of players, fans, and coaches. Massive shortages of officials now lead to games being canceled, and the positive effects of athletic competition are at critical risk for this generation and those to come. I'm hoping we all can begin to see youth competition through a different lens. Today, mistreatment of officials has become normalized, and we are facing an abnormal future where no officials to hire means no games on the schedule. Any call, any decision, any human effect on wins and losses has become subject to not just withering criticism, but physical threats. There's a vicious cycle at work. Fans chase away officials, and there is a smaller pool to draw from, which makes it harder to get quality, well-trained people in position. The entire game suffers. Did you know, according to the National Federation of High Schools, 80% of new officials quit the game after just two seasons because of abusive behavior from the stands and sidelines? This sort of verbal abuse and threatening behavior takes a toll on all officials and makes them leave the game altogether. Did you know, from 2018 to 2022, an estimated 50,000 high school referees, roughly 20% have quit. Half of the remaining referee population is at least 50 years old, but young officials are rarely staying more than three years in the job. If the number of officials working contests in all sports doesn't begin to increase, there won't be enough officials to work the games. That means schedules will get cut, teams or even sports might get canceled. In many states, this is already happening. Remember that officials are invested in what they do. Many officials have regular, full-time jobs, and they're sacrificing time away from their families. Try to demonstrate empathy. Put yourself in their position. Think how you would feel about getting yelled at throughout your workday. Yelling and arguing with officials sends the wrong message to young players. According to Play by the Rules Sports Advocacy, it teaches them that it's not okay to make a mistake. They can blame others for their actions. They can disrespect authority figures. And it's okay to be rude and selfish. You know, officials enforce rules, keep competitions fair, and make player safety a priority, allowing youth sports to be a valuable arena for growth. If we can all just work together and be more empathetic to not just the officials, but everyone else in youth and high school sports, we can then preserve what many of us have embraced about athletics. And you and I know the benefits of sports, right? Let's spread that gratitude and be proud of what we can build and not blind to how it's being torn down. Calling officials cheaters or corrupt, it's not a game. Insulting referees, it's not a game. Threatening officials, it's not a game. Berating young umpires, learning the ropes, it's not a game. Violent language in the stands, it's not a game. 
verbal abuse from the sideline, it's not a game. Screaming at a referee in the parking lot, it's not a game. So what happens now? Your response in the heat of the moment is the only thing you totally control. And we have an experiment for you to try. Simply stated, just cheer for your child or the team you're there to support. Move that desire to lash out to a different place and encourage with outrage. Your child's sporting memory should be about how you helped inspire and not about how you caused embarrassment. We welcome you back to St. Francis Prep halftime here. And it's the Terriers, the four point lead over the Crusaders of Archbishop Stepanak. Dylan Butler, John Perez here with you after a really good first half. We hope for 16 more minutes of what we saw in that first half. Particularly of that man wearing number one, Hao Chen, lighting it up from distance, doing a good job defensively too. And Jimmy Lynch saying that he and Nigel Moore just keeping it simple, uh, the simple kiss method. Uh, look it up at home, but you know, it, when they're not overthinking, they're allowed to be themselves. And what Chen has been has been a lockdown defender and a good shooter as well. And uh, St. Francis Prep is going to need those two to step up because you know that Stepanak is going to fight back. It was a three-point explosion there, especially in the second quarter. All one, two, three, four, five baskets for Stepanak were from beyond the arc in that second quarter. They have six threes on the game, eight for St. Francis Prep, evenly divided between the quarters. Let's take a look at the leading scorers for this game. And that's also been pretty balanced uh, as well. No one really kind of jumping off the page. Chen, you mentioned before, he and Pascarelli with eight apiece, and Dylan Perry leading the way for Stepanak with five. You mentioned before the break, Boogie Fland with five points. Stepanak's got one more scor scorer than St. Francis Prep. They have seven different guys who have scored the ball where St. Francis Prep has had six. Gotta love sharing the sugar, but how about Dylan Perry getting the assignment thrown into the starting five, and he's responded beautifully. Yeah, Perry came in uh, to this game, averaging just 3.3 points a game. Ca ah. Came into this season as the sixth man, right? But as you said, right, opportunity knocks, and uh, Perry making the most of, uh, of a start. You wonder how many more he's got, right? Or will he now push maybe... Uh, an incumbent starter, a guy like Ben Little, who was so good in the early portions uh, of the season, especially that game over at Cardinal Hayes, really that statement opening season win on the Grand Concourse for the Crusaders, not avenging last year's championship loss. You can't do that in your first game of the year, uh, but an important one for Stepanak, no doubt. Chen, oh, blocked by a Ritfo. Another rim rocker by a Ritfo, indeed. And you just knew that that was coming. Ritfo reading that shot coming like a telegraph and a two-handed slam. Ritfo's two baskets today, both slams. Two-point lead for St. Francis Prep now. Michelle, and he was harassed on his way to the basket by Perry, who's called for the foul. Second foul, number 10, Dylan Perry. It's his second. He's first of the second. One thing to keep an eye on for Dylan is not a lot of fouls called in the first half. Nobody was in foul trouble either, so these officials have let them play, and I think that's been a big reason why they've been able to stop uh, some of the potent scores for Stepanak. Pascarelli from three. His third three-pointer of this game. Well, comes in averaging 17, threw up a goose egg from distance, and good to see the response in the follow-up game for Pascarelli. Michelle, end to end for Tyler Michelle. He's just a guy that if he can score and he's doing things the simple way, it's tough for any team, especially Stepanak. Flan pulls up so tough to guard Boogie Flans. Yeah, th there's nothing you could do there. It's just his world sometimes and you just have to live in it. This league has a lot of really good players Land, you can make the argument, and there's few who will disagree with you, could be the best this year. Winning the Catholic League Player of the Year is certainly an accomplishment. A year ago, it was Tobey Awaka, 
as a three-pointer is knocked down by Caressi. Of course, Tobey Awaka not only led Cardinal Hayes to the Intersectional Championship, was the Gatorade Player of the Year as Pascarelli. Second attempt, no good. Gets the rebound inside. All effort and heart by Josh Pascarelli. Well, Pascarelli, one of those guys that's saying, hey, I want to be Player of the Year. I mean, certainly a first-teamer candidate uh, and one of the best players in Brooklyn, Queens. Foul called by Michelle. Yeah, that first team, I mean, you could, we don't select it, and I'm fortunate that I'm not, because that is some difficult, you mentioned in the, in the open, a guy like Nasir Muhammad, right? It's a variant. Everyone seems to have that guy. The better, the more elite teams have a few of those guys. But Pascarelli right in that conversation. Fland, Ian Jackson, uh, a lot of guys. Back on the shot by Flan, sure. Here comes Nigel Moore. Nice stutter step and high off glass for Nigel Moore. Seven for Nigel Moore. And Moore's just done everything that St. Francis Prep has asked of him to do. Ritfo looks to drive an extra step and a traveling violation called against Ritfo. And that and that's important. That's what that's what. Jimmy Lee said he knows he's going to get it from Pascarelli and Vier Anthony. Michelle's become that consistent third scorer, but they need that consistent fourth scorer to maybe to get into that elite of this league. And he believes that Nigel Moore could and should be that guy. Pascarelli inside for two more. And he just continues to get his. But I think, Dylan, what it does is, you know, how, how teams have to grind out these playoff games that are coming up, and I'm not – hunting on the regular season, but there's going to be times where St. Francis Prep is in foul trouble. I mean, injuries do happen, and there's going to be times where guys like Chen and Moore will have to step up, and good to see them doing it against probably uh, one of the best teams that they face this year. Ritfo missed a three long rebound for Anthony, who pulls up and knocks it down, and a timeout by stepping out. That's a good timeout taken by Massaroni with the team down 10, but Mr. Pascarelli doing a fantastic job as well as Vier Anthony. Let's take another look at St. Francis Prep just running effortlessly, and Anthony, nice little pull-up pop, and the flush. 13-6 third quarter right now, and largest lead of the game for the Terriers, and we mentioned Arch uh, St. Francis Prep's last or upcoming games, and look at this uh, gauntlet that stepanek has got to go through. It's bad enough that you go and play all these top 25 and 50 teams. Look at this week that you have. You go back-to-back -back days, at least you're home in front of the jungle there against Lachlan, but never an easy game. And then a rivalry game on Friday night against St. Raymond's, and then that nationally televised ESPN battle against Christ the King. And you close out this stretch on a Tuesday against Mount St. Michael, which is a game in that stretch you could say, you know, could be that game that potentially you overlook as Caressi kisses it off the glass, but a really tough stretch for Pat Masseroni's guys. Yeah, no, I think that for that reason, the St. Raymond game is going to be tougher than expected, I, not to mention how talented they are and uh, how good uh, turnage is for, for the Ravens, but yeah, it, it's a big week for Stepanak. The one solace is that they're not fully manned and they are dealing with some injuries. So when it comes to playoff time, if everybody is close to 100%, um, that's the saving grace for Masseroni. But you don't want to go one and two against the other top three teams in the league and uh, don't want to lose any other matches as well. Jervis up top. There's Flan. He gets his shot off so quickly. That one was off the mark, though, and here comes Faison. Faison blocked inside by Fland. And you know what? I'm glad to see that Fland has been more assertive to start off the second half, and he was in the first half as well. Just was out for a four-minute stretch, and, and St. Francis Prep stood with Stepanak, and now they've got, uh, you know. A, a Pascarelli, three, no good. Tapped by Fland. Ended up getting it himself. And here come the Crusaders on the break. Pull up, foul line. Caressi off the mark. Flan wants the ball. He will get it. Gets it inside. 
Ritfo has got the size advantage on Pascarelli, but he can't finish down low. Now here comes Josh. Hands off, Via Anthony for three. Rims out, no good. Look at, Mich uh, look at Moore chasing it down to Michelle. He is blocked, but there is contact as well, and the foul will be against Ritfo. And Jervis, the freshman, just timing his jump a little too early and not able to secure the carom. As Michelle goes to the line, and you know, an opportunity for St. Francis Prep. You want to keep this around a 10 point edge, uh, deal a confidence blow to Stepanak, and turn this fourth quarter into a party. Michelle knocks down his first. Michelle, a guy who will do anything you ask. And a similar thing to what Maseroni said of Fland is what Lynch said at the beginning of the year about Michelle. Says maybe at times a little bit unselfish. He wants him to look for his shot more. He's done that and become, as we said, that consistent third scorer a lot of these games for the Terriers. Ten-point lead for the post-Terriers. Here's Ritfo for three, off the mark. Rebound goes to Nolan Raymond, the junior from Queens Village. Here's Vera Anthony, open, three. Pascarelli, corner, no good. Good look by Pascarelli, just didn't get it to fall. Jervis, oh, that's not a push? Yeah, it absolutely is. I thought it was interesting that the near official swallowed his whistle and it had to come all the way from half court, but either way, uh, thank goodness it was called. <laughs> I mean, that was, couldn't have been any more obvious, right? Well, you have a three-man crew. Some, someone will get the call, uh, and that was the case there. The correct call was made. Jervis, his second foul. Anthony up top, swings it. Raymond thought about it. Extra pass is intercepted by Isley. Isley guarded closely by Anthony. And that's how good Vier Anthony is defensively. Here comes Pascarelli. Ahead Got of the, the numbers. Field. Yes, they do. Faison rims around, no good. And Anthony, he is always, he, he was called for the foul there, which is fine, I think, but he is always around the ball. You've got to be aware of Vier Anthony if he's behind you, if he's in front of you, wherever he is. You know, with that hair, and I'm going to make a, a, a cross-sport reference, I mean, kind of like Troy Palomalu, right, was always on top of the ball. That's where Vera Anthony is. He's always in the play. Flans. Oh, the finger roll opportunity. Fouled on his way to the basket. Second one on Anthony. Two quickies on Vera Anthony. Flan not only has that great catch and shoot, he's so quick with his shooting, but also that first step as yeah. well. Yeah, probably has the best first step in the league and uh, has been working on getting to the basket and, and cutting to the hoop. So uh, that's been working for him as well. And, you know, for Stepanak, they got to get him going. I feel like we've been saying this all day. Uh, there you see the offers, St. John's, UNC, Maryland. Uh, Syracuse. That among 23. Syracuse and Alabama, the latest this month to offer Boogie Flans. Good friends of Ian Jackson, and Jackson makes news just yesterday, committing to North Carolina. Congratulations to him. Nolan Raymond. He'll get in the scorebook. I think this is the part of the game where now Boogie Flan wants to take over. Yeah, it gets the true floater uh, to go and make this an eight-point game. And you need some stops now, and Flan will get the assignment. Inside the final minute of the third quarter, eight-point lead for St. Francis Prep. Tyler Michelle steps out for three. And that's just Jervis not stepping up and with some space, St. Francis Prep able to knock it down. Their largest lead of the contest. And Michelle's third three-pointer of this game. Jervis, Flan getting hot right now. Boogie Flan, foul line jumper. Rims around, no good. Here comes Pascarelli looking to push. Pascarelli guarded by Flan, the floater! Oh, 
I love them being aggressive. Most coaches will say, hey, you're up double digits, just slow it down, run out the clock. No, put it right uh, in their grill and, and put this game out of reach. Final seconds of this third quarter. Caressi with a prayer, no good. Rebound goes out, Faison will hold on. And a terrific third quarter for the Terriers of St. Francis Prep. A 13 point lead, get out and transition, and Pascarelli will finish. 13 point lead, St. Francis Prep. You're watching the CHA AA Showdown presented by Maspeth Federal Savings Bank on the Varsity Media Sports Network. You're watching the Varsity Media Sports Network, the home for New York high school sports. Maspeth Federal Savings is here through it all. The ins and outs, the ups and downs, through the winters, the summers, and even the spring of leaks. Know that Maspeth has your back. From luxury sheets to balance sheets to dancing under the stars, your mission is our mission. And when our community calls, we proudly step forward. So whether you need it now or planning for tomorrow, through all the twists and all the turns, you can always find us right here in your neighborhood. We welcome you back to Fresh Meadows, Queens. Inside St. Francis Prep, the Terriers with a 13-point lead over the Crusaders of Archbishop Stepanak. Dylan Butler, John Perez here with you in the Varsity Media Sports Network for the final quarter, the final eight minutes here of regulation as Stepanak looking to avoid back-to-back -back defeats, losing to Simeon on Sunday up at Hoop Hall in the Basketball Hall of Fame, their last big non-league showdown, and St. Francis Prep also looking to avoid back-to-back, -back, although it would be league defeats for them as they lost to Zavarian here on Friday night which I'll make the argument have greater consequences for St. Francis Prep. Jervis, strong to the hole for the first basket of the fourth quarter. Pascarelli really heated up in that third quarter. He's got 17 now. Michelle, a lot of contact down low. No foul was called, and it will be Stepanak ball. 22 to 13. St. Francis Prep outscored Stepanak in that third quarter, which is uh, why they had a double-digit lead coming into the fourth. Yeah, really made Stepanak pay. The Crusaders did not box out. Led to some open jumpers, too, for St. Francis Prep. And they cashed in. Pascarelli the rebound. Pushes it ahead to Veer Anthony. Veer Anthony, no good. And again, that's what St. Francis Prep does. Even when they miss... They're going to challenge that ball. You're not going to get out in transition as quickly as you would like. Well, and a chance to get in between the ears, too, of the underclassmen for Stepanak, who, quite frankly, have just been boat raced uh, since the start of the second half. Traveling violation called against Amir Sullivan. Here's Vera Anthony. Quiet night, at least in terms of scoring the ball for Vera Anthony. He's got four. Pascarelli has been hot. Count it. And the foul. Terriers needed their top dog to step up tonight. And it's been Pascarelli who's done a fantastic job. The other crew is, has done a fantastic job backing them up. But it's really been Pascarelli's show. And you know what? When you go against some of these top teams in the league and they know what's at stake, particularly Pascarelli. Uh, good players don't have back-to-back -back off nights, and that's not going to be the case now for Joshua. Pascarelli is going to be a great fit up there in Poughkeepsie, playing for Marist in the MAC Conference for former Malloy standout John Dunn. Join his buddy as well, Jaden Daughtry, first-team All-League for St. Francis Prep a year ago. Terriers last year, what a great season they had as well as Anthony splits the fenders, and he will get to the basket. A year ago, St. Francis Prep, all they did was go 22-4, and four, losing to eventual champion Cardinal Hayes in the semifinals, 73-62. 
as Bland was fouled on the floor by Pascarelli. And you know, I know he didn't get a Division One offer, but Latique Briscoe having himself a good year at St. Rose as well in the Division Two level in the NE10. Um, torched Queens College a few weeks ago uh, in his homecoming. But yeah, this was a St. Francis prep team that had built the foundation for a couple of years. It poured out to 20 plus wins and they have even higher expectations this year. Three pointer by Caressi and of those freshmen, as is a 30 second timeout called by Stepanek of those freshmen, man, has Caressi had a game for himself. 13 right now for Caressi, well above his season average of five. Yeah, and he's someone that Massaroni said has been fantastic in practice and just had a fight for minutes with uh, Danny Carbusia and Boogie Flan. But, you know, he's taken it on and uh, someone who can run a point guard set um, will need to navigate and, and try to fall out of this dozen hole. Of those four losses a year ago for St. Francis Prep, one of them came to Stepanek. Again, only one meeting, right? Uh, at least regular season-wise. That was up in White Plains, final game of the regular season. You see Boogie Flan there with 23, 6, and 4. Isaiah Alexander now joining Sam Gibbs in, at Loyola, 23 and 12 in that game as well to lead Stepanak to a big home win. At the time, St. Francis Prep as Moore steps out for three and buries it. At the time, St. Francis Prep was the top ranked team in the state of New York. It was the second time in the week that Stepanak beat the top-ranked team in the state, beating Cardinal Hayes earlier also at home. Yeah, I mean, that's just what Pat Masseroni does, right? Just beat ranked teams, no, no sweat. Ritfo, they need an answer here, 63-48. to 48. Jervis, top of the key, front rim no good. Pascarelli, another rebound. Moore, smart move there, kicking it back out. Pascarelli to Faison now. Faison to a cutting more. No good. Anthony challenges for the rebound. Isley comes down with it. He gets it to Caressi. Caressi, some separation and the basket. And you can see the fundamentals are there for Caressi too as he just grows into his body. He's going to be a tough player to stop. Yeah, you mentioned older brother Suleiman went to Richmond, now at Radford. You know, you want to talk about a house divided. How about that? I own a prep in Stepanak. Luckily, they're not facing each other. Foul was called. It was on Ritvo, his second in the team's fifth. Yeah, I own a Stepanak. That is your battle of the boulevard, if you will, up in Westchester County, man. Whatever sport they play, uh, it is a war. There's no doubt. This year's game, and... And that's kind of the funny thing, too, between these two teams. They, their rivalry has outgrown each other's gym. Right. For that game this year sold out at Iona University. You know, that's the second time that they'll play at Iona this year, too. Uh, they had the Crusader Classic on January 7th and then later this year. Your Anthony shot rims around, no good. Here comes Flan, the head of the field, trying to fry and vip Ritvo, but he will step out on the baseline. Out of necessity now, it looks like Stepanak will look to pick up full court. Midway point of this fourth quarter and a 13-point lead for St. Francis Prep. Thought it was interesting we didn't see it at all in the third quarter at times when St. Francis Prep was going on that run, outscored him by nine. Uh, that Masseroni would put a press up there and force uh, either Moore or Chen or, or even Michelle to handle the rock up the floor. Michelle called for the off-ball foul, so it'll stay, though, with St. Francis Prep. There is Tyler Michelle, guarded by Isley. Look at the explosion to the hoop. Tyler Michelle. Get out of the way. Yeah, the sea just opening up for Michelle. I mean, he's having himself a day. And miscommunication there between Ritvo and Fland. Michelle with 15, which is the lead right now for St. Francis Prep as well. Michelle hands off 
to Michelle. It feels like everybody is getting involved in the scoring. We don't have the shooting percentages here, but it's got to be very high right now for St. Francis Prep. Look at Flan just wanting that basketball. Gets to the hoop and the harm. Well, it's going to have to start now for Stepanak and particularly Boogie Flan and try and get three points per possession. And if there's anyone that can do it, it's Flan. But, you know, he hasn't found a stroke since the first half, and even then only five points at the break. Uh, St. Francis Prep has done a fantastic job, and just to piggyback on your point earlier, Dylan, to beat Stepanak, whether they're undermanned or not, it's going to take a full team effort. And you can now put this tape out there. Uh, look at the St. Peter's victory as well. Uh, there's a blueprint out there to beat Stepanak, and it just takes a full team effort. Now, is that easy? Obviously not. Uh, but that's what it's going to have to take to knock off the Crusaders. And St. Francis Prep three and a half minutes away from doing so. Comfortably, by the way. Well, that run, it looks like that Lynch thought that Stepanak would have. Maybe he's starting now. Anthony, did he deflect it on the way out? We have some help, and it is a tip, so it'll be Stepanak basketball. Twelve point lead inside the final 334. Flan to the hole, no good. And here comes Vera Anthony ahead of the field. Nolan Raymond. Wild shot, no good. Thought he was he thought there was the contact. It was not called. And it will be Stepanak ball. First time, by the way, today we're seeing number five, Jahai Gary, into the game. And same is true as, as soon as we saw Gary, the wide receiver on the football team, on Michael Donald's great Crusaders football team. He leaves the game, and first time we're seeing Cole Decker. The senior, the oft-injured, unfortunately, Cole Decker. He's got a lot of NESCAC interest. There is Decker in the lane. No good. Shots are just not falling for Stepanak this afternoon. And they've just been playing exceptional team defense, too. It's not that Stepanak's just not hitting their open shot because they're not. It's been because of the tenacious defense by the Terriers. Pascarelli has played the leading role as we expected him to, as they expect him to every game. Inside look. No basket. No basket. Foul was called on the floor. He should be free throws the rest of the way. That was Isley's third and the seventh, so Michelle will shoot the single bonus. 15 points for Tyler Michelle to this point. I mean, what more can you say about Michelle? It's basically been his coming out party. I mean, he's been fantastic, and the question mark for St. Francis Prep this year was who's going to step up after Anthony and, and Pascarelli? Yeah, supplemental scoring. Right? Well, there it is. Capital S. Whatever that means. And Nigel Moore has done that as well, right? He's got 10. Michelle now with 17. Land high, arcing three is good, and a timeout called by Massaroni. Seventeen now for Boogie Fland as well. Well, like the timeout by Massaroni, you want to slow it down, set up your press, uh, but also say exactly who uh, you want to foul. If if you are going to foul or trap or anything like that, as we take a look at the recent. Uh, CHSAA champions. Yeah, see Christ the King there with that incredible run, a run that when we spoke earlier this season ahead of that St. Francis Prep first uh, round one of St. Francis Prep Christ the King, Joe Albertello said, I did not expect to do that. And, and when he took over the reins, he said, maybe we would win two championships in my first maybe 10 years. And you see all the, the championships for Christ the King, a team that is arguably, I guess we'll find out sometime around 11 o'clock on Sunday night if they remain that team, but arguably that team to beat. Stepanak obviously has a great 
uh, argument for that as well. You see the Crusaders there as well, and uh, they had that win in 2018, but they've been to the championship game so many times as well, falling just short a couple of times as well. Can we talk about the job that Pat Masseroni's done in his six years, um, excuse me, in his eight years for Stepanak? And you remember, too, before they ascended uh, to the greatness or at least getting to the finals, they had a super talented team, Jordan Tucker, Andre Hyatt. They didn't win a lot of games. Um, they switch up personnel, bring in uh, a guy like R.J. Davis, uh, who's really young, uh, the Griffin brothers, uh, obviously one in the NBA, another good career over at Syracuse. Uh, Joel Soriano, who had a fantastic game against UConn for St. John's. Uh, he's just built a culture of winners and has brought players to the next level, and we'll see some jostling underneath as Howard Isley pushed uh, Vera Anthony. Yeah, Masseroni, like the good head coach that he is as well, gives a lot of credit as well to his associate head coach, Rodney Swain, and he said really the culture change for them kind of happens in year two together where... You know, you're getting kids and families help change the culture. You mentioned Griffin and Soriano, Xavier Wilson, R.J. Davis. He had 10 wins that first year to 18 to 27. They win a federation championship as well. And it's from that point, it's about trying to maintain that success going forward. You know, it, it, it's... It's what separates the winning programs, right? They're able to stay and make adjustments and stay on that level. And not to say it's easy to win a championship, but you win one. How hard is it to win number two, number three? Number That's Joe Arbitello, like you just said uh, before. Not exactly easy, no matter how gifted or how much of a history your program has. You still have to go out there every day and play those 32 minutes and sometimes more. Here's Fland. Tipped there by Moore. Which way are we going to go? St. Francis Prep ball. Moore ended up pushing it off. I think it was Jervis there across the way. And I think it bears repeating. And again, Masseroni will not look for these excuses. But, I mean, look, you're down to Danny Carbusia, a guy who's got 11 Division I offers right now as a sophomore. He's your lead guard, if you will, or one-two punch as a timeout is called by St. Francis Prep. But Carbusia, a guy who has done an incredible job this season transforming his body. Unfortunately, and the new year, when the ball dropped in Times Square, it fell right on, the, on this basketball team for Stepanak. Uh, they've been really hampered with injuries in the year 2023, Carbusia being the biggest, along with Ben Little as well. Uh, but Carbusia, a guy, there you see some of his, those offers for him. FDU, Fordham, LIU, UMass, St. Louis, Seton Hall, St. Bonaventure, West Virginia. We expect to see he's listed as day-to-day -day with that right shoulder injury. Uh, put on the, the practice gear yesterday and... Uh, was able to raise his shoulder above his head, which uh, brought delight to his head coach. So maybe not too much in the future now for Carbusi to get back on the court. Same probably for Ben Little, who's fortunately with his uh, foot injury has still been able to, to work out and stay in shape and is able to swim and, and do all the things other than get on the basketball court well and there's steps too right to to the whole rehab process and i'm not a doctor or anything but i'd have to imagine that Masseroni, it's it's one getting them healthy enough so with carbusia uh lifting the his shoulders or his hands above his shoulders that's great progress but one when are they going to be able to practice and then how do they feel after practice that's the big key can they practice two times a week and then play three games? Especially with a daunting playoff schedule that's going to come up uh, towards the end of next month. It's a long recovery, and obviously in basketball you need your shoulders. <laughs> you got to shoot the ball. You got to pass the rock. Um, so that's something to keep an eye on for. With both of those guys, and even Little, who's dealing with the foot injury, he's got to get up and down the floor. Can't keep him on one end. 21, game high 21 now for Pascarelli. 69-56 lead here inside the final two minutes of this fourth quarter. We're so thankful you're able to join us here on a Tuesday afternoon. Cole Decker for three. Rims out, back iron. 
And you can make the argument for St. Francis Prep. The Terriers about 90 seconds away from their signature win of this 2022-23 season. Michelle, little four corners right now for the Terriers. Inside pass to Michelle and he's fouled in the lane. Foul on Isley. And Isley has fouled out. Thought we saw some good stretches from Isley today. Knocked down a couple of threes. Played good defensively, just not the best finish for Isley, but he'll learn from this and make him a better player for it. So two free throws the rest of the way now for St. Francis Prep. Michelle back to the line, knocks it down. He has been very good from the foul line. I'm gonna jinx him here, of course, but he's knocked down to this point all five of his free throw attempts. I guess I'm not. Not yet. Ice water. And 19 for Michelle. 71 56 the lead. 116 left. Stepping out. High arcing three. That's hard to do in this gym, by the way, with the stanchions above the court. Usually those high arcing shots get knocked down and out for a, a turnover. And now again, Stepanak having to play the foul game. Decker is called for the foul, which will send Faison to the line. Yeah, it's a unique, uh, it's a unique gym. If we could get a shot of the ceiling uh, by Travis on the sideline, our wonderful cameraman. But, you know, what's really, it, it's kind of like, and it doesn't show here on TV, it's kind of like a big ballroom, right? It's wide, you've got plenty of space. Obviously, it's great for the basketball there the team. There you go. And, and that's not and even Especially that middle scale. divide there. That's the tough one because during gym class, again, it's the, it's the largest Catholic school, right, in the, in the country it remains so. So you've got to separate the gym for the gym classes. So that's where that separation comes down. And uh, listen, when, when, it's, when it's the final second to try to get that full court heave, it is not happening in this gym. <laughs> that is for sure. Final minute. Three by... Boogie rims around and out. Michelle ahead of the field to Michelle. And looks like Stepanak is going to call off the dogs here. 73 56. And again, it was a lopsided win for Stepanak at home last year. And White Plains and the Terriers get a little bit of revenge here at home as they'll pull away for a really big win. Classy stuff, too, here by. St. Francis Prep, a lot of times you see teams maybe down the stretch, right, look for those power jams or what have you. In fact, they'll run out the shot clock here and not even take an attempt at the basket. A clinical, precisional, professional win for St. Francis Prep at home, defending home court. And, you know, those 4 o'clock games will get... Those four o'clock games can sneak up on you, especially a team coming from Westchester too. Uh, you know, Stepanak only gets out at 2.30, has to make the trip downtown, but St. Francis Prep, it's the day of the Terrier, one of their signature wins in the regular season. Fantastic job all around, Josh Pascarelli, Pierre Anthony, love the one-two punch off the bench of Nigel Moore and Hao Chen. Good win for the Terriers as they pick up win number nine. Uh, on the season, a good statement win. And you know what? We talked about how much uh, these intersectional games can play uh, in, in terms of making a statement. Well, St. Francis Prep just did so. Tremendous effort here by the Terriers. And we'll get our player of the game momentarily. John Perez will track him down. But uh, great team effort by St. Francis Prep again coming off that loss to Zavarian a big big home win for the Terriers 73-56 over Stepanak we're endeavoring right now to get our player of the game Josh Pascarelli Another big performance and another big win. And uh, we are joined now by Josh, Josh Dylan Butler, John Perez with you. Congratulations um, on the win. Look, you guys are coming off 
uh, a very a rare home loss. You don't lose at yeah, home very yeah. often. Um, and it was a little bit of a, of a strange game for you guys. The shots, the looks were there. The shots didn't fall for Zavarian. Um, but you guys bounced back in a big way today. Yep. Thank you. Uh, Friday's game was tough. You know, they made shots, and we didn't give credit to them. They stepped up. They played well. They made shots, and we lost Friday. But we knew we had to bounce back today. And we just we just made more shots. So we played hard, and we got the win. You know? For you personally and your head coach, uh, Jimmy Lynch was saying he can't remember the last time you didn't make a three in a game <laughs> against Zavarian. One, how much was that on your mind? And once you saw the first one go down today, what did that do for your confidence? Uh, it just felt good to knock one down because that's what I really do. I'm, I'm a shooter. But after the loss on Friday, I made sure I put up shots on Saturday, and Sunday, and Monday. So that's all it was, a good mindset just to get back in the gym, put some shots up, and they dropped today, and that's what we needed. And these guys were off on Saturday. There was no off day for Josh Pasquarelli. He was back in the gym taking shots. Josh, it wasn't just you. I mean, you had 21 today, but, you know, Tyler Michelle with 19. Uh, Hao Chen, that big first half as well. It seemed like, you know, you, maybe you guys were expecting that run by Stepanak, but the, but your collective shooting, I think, took them out of that. Yeah, uh, great game overall. Uh, Tyler stepped up in a big way. He made shots when we needed them. Everybody contributed. They played their part. Nolan, Nolan Raymond came in off the bench, gave us buckets. He helped us play defense, all that. Just productive day for everyone. How much of a statement does this give for St. Francis prep to the rest of the league? Uh, just lets everybody know we're still here uh, with the people who graduated last year. We're still one of the top teams, and we're here to compete the whole season. Big statement win for the Terriers. Josh Pasquarelli uh, putting the exclamation point on that statement. Congratulations, Josh, on the, on the win, and uh, best of luck going forward as well. Thank you. So St. Francis prep a 73 to 56 win over Archbishop Stepanak, led there by Josh Pascarelli with 21, Tyler Michelle with 19 as well, Nigel Moore with 10. Hey, those are your big three right there, and you do that, John Perez, without having Vera Anthony have a big day, at least scoring the basketball. Only right. had six, but you had those three guys in double figure scoring and a couple other guys who, who were right on the precipice as well. Well, and I think that's what makes Vera Anthony such an attractive prospect, right? When he's not getting his buckets, he's contributing defensively. And that's exactly what he did. But you know what? I like the two-sidedness of uh, how Chen today and Nigel Moore. Obviously, they hit the shots. That's what's going to stick out in all the publications after this. But defensively, doing a good job of locking down Boogie Fland in the first half. And then you know what? With that big run that St. Francis Prep had, they could then be flexible on their game plan, let Fland go off because they're stopping everyone else. They're at five, beat Stepanax one uh, in that matchup, and a big win for St. Francis Prep. As Mr. Pascarelli said, they're still here. They are still here. I think Stepanak is as well. Um, again, under uh, under Mans today with their two injuries to Carbusia and Little. But Flan had 17. Um, a big, big kind of uh, breakout performance by Hassan Caressi. That's got to be a, a, a positive for Pat Masseroni. He had 15 in this game, but only those two scorers. There wasn't that third guy here today for the Crusaders who dropped back-to-back -back games. Stepanak is now 7-6 and six overall, 4-2 and two in the league. St. Francis Prep improves to 9-4 and 5-2 and and in the league. Well, that'll do it here from Fresh Meadows, Queens for our entire varsity media crew. A terrific one as well for our executive producer, Ben Turchin, our technical director, Chris Sweeney, guys bringing you all the great images as well. Humesh Boudou and Travis DeLuise from my broadcast partner, John Perez, Dylan Butler, thanking you for joining us and look forward to seeing you next time right here on the Varsity